snap. How you doing? Not too convincing. Not too convincing. Glory. What an awesome day to die. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. Oh, man, that fan's got to go. Hallelujah. Would you grab your swords this morning? Don't hurt your neighbor now. <laughs> Proverbs 23. Proverbs 23. It's good for me and good for you. You know, we are... Not only in the end times, but there is so much demonic influence in the atmosphere. Amen? And, uh, and, and in this time, there is such a battle. Let me share something with you. While you're in living on this earth, you're in a battle every day until you leave. The day you give up your last breath, the battle's over. But other than that, you're in a battle. And if you're not willing to fight, you will become a casualty. I'm going to tell you right now. Because right now, the powers of darkness are looking for every loophole. They're looking for every crack. They're looking for that compromise. They're looking for that area where people have fallen off, no longer consistent, not maintaining their routine. They're looking for those individuals. Why? Because they can use that individual to bring shame to the Lord. That's what they're looking for. So there's a battle going on in Proverbs 23 and verse 1. Let's sit down and speak it together. It says, when you sit down to eat with a ruler. Now listen, when you sit down, that means when you sit down with someone in authority, that means you're going to listen or hear or pay attention. Amen? So when you sit down to listen, hear, or pay attention to someone in authority, to eat, it means you're going to partake in this conversation. Consider, be careful, what is before you. Amen? What is before you. And put a knife to your throat. If you are a man given to appetite, in other words, if you're willing to eat anything. Do not desire his delicacies. This is a warning. For they are what? They're deceptive food. It's amazing how many people pay more respect to people that are wealthy than anyone, anyone else. The Bible says respect one another regardless of what their position Amen? But despise those that are prideful. Doesn't mean you hate them. Do not desire his delicacies, for they are deceptive food. Amen? In other words, without testing the spirit, you will in partake or intake deceptive information or knowledge. Because in a conversation, knowledge is, is exchanged. And that will bring an evil corruption or contamination to you. He says, do not overwork to be rich. Because of your own understanding cease, will you set your eyes on the things that are not? Hmm. Pretty credible. Will you set your eyes on the things that are not? For rich is certainly what? Make themselves wings, they fly away like an eagle toward heaven. Do not eat of the bread of the what? Miser, and again, I call that a compromiser. Nor desire his what? Delicacies. Again, he's asking us to be more discerning 
of what we associate with. Do not desire his delicacies, for as he thinks in his heart, so he, wit, so he is. In other words, whatever his desires are, he becomes. Eat and drink, he says you, but his heart is not with you. The more so you have eaten, you will vomit up and waste your pleasant words. Again, we've got to come to a place where we are more discerning what we're associating with more sensitive to those things. As a man thinks, well, every thought is a think, right? <laughs> so these are thoughts of desires. <laughs> if you think, you thought. Things that a person thinks here has thoughts. These are desires. These are thoughts of emotional desires. Because in your heart is the core of all desire. You become or... <laughs> So you become as you think. Amen? Many people are in pursuit of their desires instead of a pursuit of God or in pursuit of his presence. These places of battle are in your thoughts. In other words, there's a battle of the mind. The enemy is trying to take hold of your mind. He's taken hold of many minds already. He's brought them into captivity. There are many people in the mental institution the enemy's taken captive when they can be set free. Again, the battle is where? In the mind. If it's a battle's in the mind, it's in the what? Thoughts. And as a man thinks, so he is. So the enemy's always trying to alter anything that he can. If you give, the Bible says, make no place for the devil. People give, make place for the devil by their thoughts. They believe everything they hear. They don't test nothing. They don't test their thoughts. And then when they believe it, the enemy accesses. He takes possession. He wants to take every part of memory. Present day memory. And then he wants to bring you to your past memory. See, the word says, if you're a new creation in Christ, old things pass away, all things have become new, even your memory. But the enemy still holds places there until he's removed from each memory. And that's the authority that you and I have as Christians, Christ-like. So again, the battle, there's a battle of the mind, or what we might call the battle of minds. Because there's more than one type of mind out there. There's a carnal mind. Amen? There's the mind of the spirit. And then there's the mind of influence, which is created artificially. I call it AI, artificial intelligence. There's artificial intelligence. There's carnal intelligence. And then there's eternal intelligence. So there's a battle of the mind. And Romans 8. Hallelujah. Romans 8. As a man thinks, so he is, or he becomes. You know, every thought has an image. Every thought has a voice. Every thought has a desire. And every thought has an influence behind it. Every thought. So many times people will go back into their own old thinking. And it reactivates things from their past. Because these are emotional desires associated with each and every one. In verse 5, Romans 8, 5. 
It says, for those who what? Live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. In other words, they're setting their minds on the things of the flesh, the carnal, the carnal mind, the things of the world. But those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. Again, carnal mind I call CI, carnal intelligence. I think that's where the CIA came from. I don't want to get the last initial. But anyways, it was CIA. <laughs> Carnal intelligence. And then you got the spiritual mind, which is eternal intelligence. And then you have artificial intelligence, which was created by fallen angels. Does everybody get it? See, God utilizes anything that's done in this world, he tries to utilize for his advancement. But anyone has access to all things that made in, the, in this realm, even the powers of darkness. Artificial intelligence was released, by, I really truly believe, by the fallen angels. Their purpose was to mind control as many as they could through the artificial intelligence. Now they got virtual intelligence where people are taken captive in their minds by these things they put on and watch. You can go right into a whole nother world and forget the one you're in. You can have a heart attack. You can even die in that world. But see, people are not testing these things. The drugs that are out there now are to bring mind control. TV shows can bring mind control. Music brings mind control. And it takes possession of an individual. Now listen, it doesn't mean that every thought of is not good. It means it uses when it needs to. That's called mind control. It plants, it uses when it needs to. It causes an individual to react when it needs to. It causes an individual to do whatever. And they do it unknowingly. They just go do it. What causes a drug addict to go back drinking again? What causes an individual to go back fornicating? What causes an individual to put sin in their eyes? The things that they watch. It's influenced. It's mind control. What causes an individual to become selfish, arrogant, and prideful? It promotes self. It's flesh. It's mind control. So the enemy is trying to take captive of every mind possible. And he knows he can do it in a global arena to artificial intelligence. Is everybody okay? We've got to be sensitive to this. Don't you think we need to start battling against that? Artificial intelligence, corruptive artificial intelligence. Hey Amen. I call destructive fire down on every one of them every day. They are corruptive and destructive artificial intelligence. You know, right now, look at how many people are dependent on it right now. Computers. Man, people, there are big corporations that cannot operate without a computer. We can't get some of the stuff and the music and so forth without the operation of the computer. So the computer is actually, it was created, okay, with the intelligence that was granted in some areas by God and some areas by the enemy. And misused or used correctly. But again, in this t artificial intelligence, it means it's, it has its own way of thinking to control. It's an intelligence. It's an intelligence. And I think people forget that, that what they're doing and touching with is intelligence. What's it trying to do? Take yours. It's trying to exchange what you know towards God Almighty and compromise it. Dumb us down and take possession of our thoughts. Amen? Praise God. Let's go a little further. It says here in verse 6, 
For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is what? Life and peace. That's, listen, the only thing that has dominion over any other intelligence is eternal intelligence. It even has dominion over artificial intelligence. Now, unfortunately, artificial intelligence can outsmart me and you in the, the carnal mind. But in the mind of Christ, it cannot. Amen? Why? Because you won't allow it to affect you. It says, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. So then those who are in the flesh or in the carnal cannot please God. Again, the carnal mind is um, carnal intelligence. The spiritual mind is the eternal intelligence. And the AI is artificial intelligence created by fallen angels to advance their agenda, to captivate the human mind and bring complete control or dependence on them. I mean, really think about this, how much we are dependent on artificial intelligence. The whole world is dependent on artificial intelligence. All of our electricity, all of our water flow, they have now weaponry that can they just explode a bomb in the air and it wipes out all of it. So there will be no flow of water, there will be no power, no lighting, no nothing. Everything, cars couldn't start, nothing. It can wipe out any type of power. Even emergency generators won't work. Nothing. It would be right back when there wasn't anything left. That's how simple it can be. One bomb explodes in the air and wipes out everything. It would be darkness if it was dark. Hallelujah. Okay. Again, they want to turn their thoughts. <laughs> so one of the things that God is trying to do is bring us to a place where we test these things. We are prepared for these things. Where we are discerning of these things and who we are. Remember the first thing the enemy tries to do is come and steal your identity. I really truly believe in this, that this intelligence has been advanced by the fallen angel race, the Niflum race, to bring complete control and dependence, to turn the thoughts of man into all directions of deception with the ability to advance their race. Why? They can actually come and take possession of an individual through the mind. Now they begin to advance their agenda in their race. Look at, this is what you're seeing all over the world right now. You're seeing it being exposed that these individuals have been taken captive in their mind. They are now under mind control. These politicians, presidents and governors and mayors and so forth, why do they want to mask people? Why do they want to isolate people? Because they're under control. They want to eventually kill people, which they are slowly. Amen? Hallelujah. Uh, Ephesians 4. Eternal intelligence through the mind of Christ, we have dominion. So we can actually use artificial intelligence for our advantage. We don't allow it to use us. We can actually use the carnal mind to our advantage. It doesn't use us. Ephesians 4 and verse 17. Let's speak it together. And this I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the what? Fertility of their what? Their mind or their thinking. Their thoughts. Having their understanding darkened. 
being alienated from the life of God or from the mind of God. Because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart. Listen, who do you think started all of these denominations? It wasn't God. It's the powers of darkness. By controlling one mind to start this, and another one to start that, another one. Why? Because they knew what was coming. Having their understanding darkened. Verse 19, who being past feeling, having given themselves over to lewdness, to work of all uncleanness, with greediness. He said, but you haven't learned Christ then. You haven't learned the anointing. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as, through, as, the, as the truth is in Jesus, that you do what? You put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt, according to the deceitful what? Lusts. Desires. Those desires are associated with thoughts. And be renewed, what? In the spirit of your, now the spirit of your mind is your new man. That is your new man. Amen? And that you put on the what? New man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, putting away lying, let each of you speak the truth with his neighbors, for we are members of one another. Listen, the first thing he says, what? Put away lying. What are we seeing all over the place? The children of the father of lies. They're lying all over, making promises to get position. Why? To put people under control. Remember, the devil fears you more. That's why he wants control. He fears those who are spirit-filled because he knows they're the only ones that can take dominion over him. Therefore, putting away lying. 26, be angry and don't sin. There's nothing wrong with being angry. Just don't react. Amen? Hallelujah. Be angry and don't sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Nor give place to the devil because you give him place. He takes a possession of a memory. He's trying to take control. Does everybody understand that? Put off the old way of thinking. The, let me, the mind, the image, the imagination, the desires, and all associations with it. That's why God has given us a routine. That's why God has given us a plan. That's why he gave us the Bible. And that's why he's given us the Holy Spirit to constantly direct us and tell us all truth. Why? So we can avoid being taken captive in the mind. How many know fear is nothing but captivity? Anxiousness, anxiety. When people are still living out of their past, they're not in the spirit. See, this is what this is about. Walking in the Spirit. Living in the Spirit. That is the only way that you avoid your past. Without walking and living in the Spirit, your past is always before you. Other than that, it's behind you. Amen? If you're walking in the Spirit. In Galatians 5. That's why there are many casualties of war. And I'm talking that we are in a spiritual war, but it is a war of thoughts. It's a war of the mind. In verse 16, Galatians 5, 16, let's speak it. I say then walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh or the lust of the carnal mind, the desires. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one another, so you do not do the things that you wish or you desire. In other words, you have dominion. But if you are led by the spirit, you're not under the law, the physical law, the law of death, the law of sin. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness. These are things that bring Mind control from the enemy. Idolatry, sorcery, hatred, 
contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, hearsay, hearsay, hearsays, something like that. Heresies. Here. He see. Envy. Murderers. You think somebody had murders? See, murder is an intention of killing someone. Now, there's an open door of demonic activity, and then there's one that's not, because the difference in war, you're, if you're going to kill someone, you better make sure that they're going to kill you first. Then you kill them. Amen? Then it's not of guilt or shame. But there's an area where people are killing because of anger, rage, jealousy. They are um, things that, look at all the people, these Antifa morons. Look at what's going on with them. They're out there killing people. It's for hatred. Burning buildings down. Listen, these mayors are under mind control that are allowing this to happen in their states. They are under demonic mind control control in every area. That's why you and I have to fight this in the spirit realm. There are demonic frequencies that are constantly going out. But he who's in us is greater than he who's in the world. That's why we need to stay filled, dressed, and possessed with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Oh, happy days. All right, now, uh, it says in verse 21, the envy, murder, drunkenness, and the like of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against there is no law. And those who are Christ, those who have the mind of Christ. See, if you're Christ, then you have the mind of Christ. In other words, to be called a Christian, you must be operating and com complying and submitting to the mind of Christ. That's what a Christian is. You are submitting to the thoughts of Christ. That's what a Christian is. Amen? And those who are in Christ have crucified the flesh. They have dominion. With its what? Is anybody there? Passions and what? Desires. Desires. Passions and desires. It's crucified them. No longer has dominion because the mind, the thoughts of Christ are always overtaking it. If we live in the Spirit, let us walk in the Spirit and let us not become what? Conceited. Provoking. Self-righteous. Arrogant. Or prideful or envy in one another. Why? Because it will allow the enemy to take possession. Walking in the Spirit is from the future to the present, no longer from the past to the present. As a new creation in Christ, in Christ, that means that you have got a new mind. You've got a new set of thinking. You're no longer who you used to be. You no longer think the way you used to think. Your desires are not according, going backwards, they're going forward. Let me tell you something. We're still in the great falling away. There's a great harvest, but there's still the falling away. And still many people will fall and die because they're not willing. They're not lovers of the truth. They're not lovers of the truth. See, to love the truth and be a lover of the truth, it can only be activated by the mind of Christ. If, it's not, if you're not a lover of the truth, you're in the flesh. And if you're in the flesh, you're dangerous to yourself and to others. Why? Because you eventually turn on someone. The enemy will control you to turn on someone. And then you'll look for a false fulfillment and go right back where you came from. And I don't care how long you've been a Christian. It can happen just like that. Psalm 43.
Psalm 43. Everybody there? Everybody okay? Are you getting this? Again, we go back to that wonderful saying, who told you that? Who told you that? Verse 1, let's speak it. Vindicate me, O God, and plead my cause against the ungodly nation. O deliver me from the deceitful and unjust men, for you are the God of my strength. Why do you cast me off? Why do I go mourning because of what? The oppression of the enemy. In other words, that had to start with a thought. Amen? It's a thought. Where do your oppressions come from? Thoughts. What's the source of them? Demonic presence. Oh, send out your what? Your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill. So he's saying light and truth is going to lead And to your tabernacle, back into the presence of God. God is always willing to make a way of escape back into his presence. He says, then I will go to the altar of God, to my God, exceeding joy. And on the harp I will praise him, O God, my God. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him, the help of my continence in my God. He said, vindicate me, deliver me from those taken under control. They're taken under control of deceptive and it, with a deceptive mind. And allow me to escape into your presence so my mind can be restored. 2 Corinthians 4. The battle of the mind. In verse 3. Let's speak it. But even if our gospel is veiled, which is the message of truth, and remember, people are, there are people that are not lovers of the truth. But remember, the gospel is the written words of the mind of Christ. So they hate the gospel because it's still the thoughts of God. But even if our gospel, it is veiled, it is veiled to those who are what? Perishing because they've been taken captive. Whose minds the God of this age has blinded. Who do not believe or will follow. Lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your bondservants for Jesus' sake. The gospel, message of the truth, opens a door of escape from the carnal mind. And in that carnal mind, there's an, that sense of good and evil. There's that good and evil. I'm a good person. Amen? I'm a good person, but good people don't get to heaven. Why? Because they're still under captivity. Because even with a good mind, there's an evil mind. There's only one mind that overcomes all of that. It's called the mind of Christ. Without the mind of Christ, people don't make it. The gospel is a message of truth. That's why we must be lovers of the truth. If you're not a lover of the truth, if you don't love the word of God, then you are carnally minded and taken captive. Amen? Only the EI, eternal intelligence, of the mind of Christ can free us from any other control. See, many people's faith is in an artificial intelligence 
or carnal intelligence. Their faith is in man, not in the creator. And that brings them into captivity. I hear that, well, I have faith in this person. Bummer. You better have faith in God. <laughs> Second Corinthians 3, let's go back a page. Verse 8, 16. Verse 16, 2 Corinthians 3, verse 16. Nevertheless, when one turns to the what? The Lord of veil is what? Taken away. But what about when he turns away from the Lord? The veil comes back. It's that simple. <laughs> now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's what? Liberty, which means what? Freedom. So listen, there's only one place where there's freedom. That's in the spirit. Everything else is bondage. Everything else is deceptive. Everything else is destructive. Corruptive. I'm plumb dumb. Only through the mind of Christ, only by being filled, dressed, and possessed with the spirit of Jesus Christ can you be free. And now it's our responsibility to maintain it. Because the enemy's going to slide in just like a snake. Slides right in, throws a word out. And he can only attack you from your past because those are emotions of the past. Thoughts of, a pa of the past are emotion. Listen, emotion can kill people. In fact, it has. You know how many people commit suicide? It's an emotional attack. They call it a spirit of suicide. But why? Because emotions are more destructive. Listen, emotions can hurt you harder than a physical. The emotional pain, you can't put a bandage on. You can't go to a doctor. You might go to a psycho uh, doctor, what do you call them? And they're going to give you a medication, you know. Those are called cryopret. No, not what, psychiatrists, that's what they are. They're psycho doctors. They're nuts. The only thing they're going to do is give you medication. Does everybody understand? I mean, many, but there's people, look at this, probably somebody in the room that went to one of those psycho doctors. And what they do, they can only sell you a pill. They got nothing to offer people. Unless they're a Christian, then they're not psycho. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 18. But we all with unveiled face beholding as in the mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory just as by the Spirit of the Lord. So we're changing constantly. There's an exchange always going on. What God's trying to do is trying to get people to repent and turn to the Holy Spirit. And allow them to have access to their mind so they can be free. Philippians 3. You know, you probably, everyone in this room probably knows somebody that's an emotional disaster right now. Amen? Amen? Make sure you send them to this teaching. <laughs> I mean, come on, you've, you probably said it to some people. Man, you're an emotional wreck. Who told you all this stuff? Where did I say to go? Philippians, okay. <laughs> Glory. Philippians chapter 3. We'll flip it to 3.
In verse 7. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. But what things were gained to me, these I have count loss for Christ. Mm. Yet, indeed, I also count all things. Everyone say all things. Lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ. That means the mind of God, the mind of Christ. See, when he got filled with the Spirit of God, he saw everything different. He thought everything different. Everything was different. He said, yet I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish, that I may gain the mind of Christ, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death, if I by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Listen, he, he's saying, look, at the, all of this is activated by faith because of my relationship. He is grateful. See, so many times we fall into complacency in the area where we become we start looking at the things we don't have and lose sight of the things that we do have. And that's how the enemy plays with people. Then he gets people to look for the things that they don't have, and they, then they begin to lose the things that they do have because they're busy looking for what they don't have. That's a deceptive agenda of the enemy. Amen? Hallelujah. Verse 12. Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I do what? I press on that I may lay hold of that which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brother, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. Hello. That's called old memories, old associations. When you are in Christ, old things have passed away. Listen, the enemy's going to try to push him up, bring him up to the present. But you have authority to say no. No, I'm not listening to that. I'm not listening to that. Why? Because he knows that if you allow it to get up to you, it will exchange. Connect with you, the next thing you know, you're in fear. You're in worry. Oh, my gosh. I find, what about what? Now you're drifting. And you're looking for what? you used to have and don't have no more. I'm telling you, we've got to outwit the serpent. And that can only be done by being in the Spirit, allowing the mind of Christ to lead you in everything. Again, he says, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are where? Ahead, that's called living from the future to the present. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let as many as are mature or have experienced or practiced the same type of thinking, this mind. That's the same type of thinking. And if anything you think otherwise, stop it. Just stop it. And God will reveal even this to you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Again, we got to press forward, count the past, <laughs> gone. Listen, it starts every day by prayer. You skip a day, you just open the door. Next thing you know, I'm struggling. No kidding. You know it. Two days, everybody else knows it. Amen? Starts by prayer. Never let anything interfere. Well, you don't know I have to get up to go to work. Well, praise God. Everybody does. Get yourself up earlier. Go the extra mile. Connect before you go. Amen? 
If you don't get, you don't connect, you're going to get disconnected. Hallelujah. Starts by prayer, daily routine, and confessing the promises of God every day. Why? Because what you speak is what you eat. Amen. It isn't that difficult. But the enemy will try to tell you it's difficult. I'm too tired. I don't have enough time. Me, 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 me. Liar. 2 Corinthians 10. Take the stinking mask off and run into the presence of God somewhere. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians 10, <clears throat> verse 3. For though we walk in the carnal, we do not want a war according to the carnal or the flesh. Verse 4, let's speak it. For the weapons of our warfare, our weapons of spiritual warfare are not carnal. They're not CI. Amen? They're EI. Or they're not AI either, okay? Google will not fight for you. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But they are mighty in God Almighty, in the mind of Christ, for pulling down strongholds. Remember what a stronghold is. It's a what? Memory lie. Wow, snap. That means darkness is taking place. Casting down arguments. Where are the arguments? They're in your mind. They're in your thoughts. Casting them down. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, then bring all of those corruptible thoughts, those voices into captivity. Bring them into captivity. In other words, you're grabbing hold of them. You're acknowledging. You're calling them every single one out to the obedience of Christ. How is the obedience of Christ? Get out in Jesus' name. No, you'll have no place here. Then what do you do? Once it's empty, it must be replaced. See, because now you've got an empty place of memory. It must be replaced with the word, which is light. I, mean, I cast down thoughts and imaginations all day long. Do you replace what you've been doing? Well, no. Well, then they ain't going. And being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is what? Fulfilled. Do you look at things according to the outward appearance? If anyone is convinced in himself that he is Christ, let him again consider this in himself, that just as he is Christ, even so we are Christ. Wow. Casting down CI and AI. Only in the spirit, able to discern the difference. Amen? Only in the spirit do you have Eternal intelligence. And what is intelligence? It's the ability. It is the ability to take knowledge and use it correctly. That's intelligence. Now, there's a lot of people that are smart, but they're stupid as can be. Amen? Why? Because they're under control. I mean, you got all these think tanks. People talk about think tanks. I see nothing but demons in there having a party. They're feeding each other. Yes, the professor was at a think tank for three days. Yes, he's demonized now. It's incredible what's going on now. Their intellectual is associated with everything that's carnal, physical, but not of God. In fact, most of them don't even believe in God. They think they're God themselves because they're so intelligent. Like I said, they're so intelligent, they're stupid. Their intelligence is corrupt and demonic, has now possessed them. They are now controlling the enemy. 
First Corinthians 2. Glory to God. We are not freed from the battle until you leave the earth. Does everybody get it? When someone leaves the earth, we can celebrate that they're free from the battle here. That's what the celebration is. Amen. Praise God. They don't have a battle no more. Ah, I'm still here. And then when somebody leaves the earth, they're so messed up emotionally because they're emotionally attached. I mean, don't get me wrong. People mourn. Okay, that's cool. Then that's it. You know, don't let the enemy beat you up because of whatever. You know what? They're home partying and you're here mourning. What are you mourning for? You're mourning because you lost someone. Okay. Because you're selfish. But you don't know. Who cares? Get in the spirit. Let the mind of Christ take over. You stay there long enough, you're going to start losing places. You're going to start surrendering places in your mind to the enemy. And you won't even know it. Next thing you know, you're still mourning 16 years later. Let it go. And grow. Amen? Verse 9, let's speak it. But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. So the carnal man can't get it. But God has revealed them to who? Us. Through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Now, we have received not the spirit of the world, amen, which is CI, carnal intelligence, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us. These things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but what the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual, with spirit, with spiritual things with spiritual. This is called EI. Eternal intelligence. Now think about this. The artificial intelligence, amen, which is basically controlled by all your media. Look at all the internet. Look at how much they're involved in, in this election and trying to interrupt it, trying to prevent people from knowing the truth, taking people off of Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter, and all of the, they're removing all of them. Why? Because they think they're gods. They're so wealthy that they think that their wealth is going to do everything. Billionaires and trillionaires and whatever heirs. But they're not heirs of Christ. Which you can't, there is not a price, there ain't enough money that can compare to that. Amen? What are they doing? They're influencing every area. They just came before Congress and they did nothing but lie to them. They wanted to know why they were taking all of this uh, stuff. I mean, they're promoting up Biden. Biden's down, I'm telling you. He's going to go to prison. Him and his family. But they're finding all of these here, the Obamanites and all of them. They're all corrupt. They believe that they're gods. That's why they think they can do what they do. What they do. Listen, why aren't they all arrested and put in jail? Look at Hillary. You and I did that stuff? Heck, I would have thought about it. They'd arrest me. Amen? Same thing with you, dude. They know. You'd have been busted on conspiracy. I mean, a girl admits destroying all the stuff that the FBI had wanted for uh, testimony against all the stuff that she was doing. Servers, record phones, all kinds. Even the FBI just destroyed the guys that were in the investigation against Trump. All they lied, they destroyed all of their phones. None of them got busted. Why? Because the people that have been placed in position are associated with the same seed of the serpent. Verse 14, but the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. Hello. Because they're carnally minded. See, I. 
for they are foolishness to them. Nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. For he who is spiritual judges all things. Judges all things. Ju See, you're to judge everything. Why? Because you carry the mind of Christ. He's the big judge. We're the little judge. But we're to judge all things. What does judge mean? Judging all things mean test. You're to be testing everything, whether it's of God or not of God. Whether it's clean or unclean. Whether it's corrupt or pure. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. No one. Why? Because you're under the judge. And he's going to judge you for what you've judged. Whether you've judged correctly, you reward. Whether you haven't judged correctly, eh, you know. You have to figure that out when you get there. Verse 16. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may what? Instruct him. But we have the mind of Christ, the thoughts of God. Amen? The thoughts. Spiritual ability to discern. That's intelligence. By taking knowledge and utilizing to discern. James 3. Oh, hallelujah. Are you having fun yet? James 3. Again, look what they've done. They've prevented people from assembling. Why? So they can keep another mind control. Verse 13. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. In other words, don't compromise. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly. Everyone say earthly, carnally, temporary, sensual, and demonic. Hello. People are going to school to get demonic wisdom. I mean, really. They're not teaching anymore. They're indoctrinating. They're trying to push an agenda. All of these kids that are in school, why? They got demonic professors there. They're all under the mind control and trying to place it into the other kids. Verse 16. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing is there. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality, without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Demonic wisdom and godly wisdom. Amen. Romans 13, and we'll close here. Battle of the mind or the minds. We got eternal intelligence, we got carnal intelligence, and we got artificial intelligence. There's a battle. But if you're truly in the spirit, you're able to use everything. You can use it, they can't use you. So when you go to Google and say, Get behind me, Google. I'm going to get in all these areas and take all the stuff you've collected and use it for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Romans 13, verse 11. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. 
And do this knowing the time that now is high time to what? Awake out of slumber, sleep, and dumbiness. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand, therefore let us cast off the works of darkness. That means stop thinking that way. And let us put on the armor of light and the mind of God. Let us walk properly as in the day, not revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy, but put on on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh or the carnal to fulfill its lusts and desires. In other words, put on the mind of Christ. Everything is associated with your thoughts. This whole world is operated by thoughts. Everything. It's a thought world. That's what it is. What you hear, what you agree, what you become and what promotes. We must allow the mind of Christ to have full dominion. That means to be filled and trust and possessed. Ask and you shall receive. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed with you as you seal this word and seal us with the mind of Christ that we may be sons and daughters that please you in thought and word and indeed, in Jesus.